First at 10, it's that time of year. After visiting family near and far for Thanksgiving, Tulsa health providers say they're seeing all kinds of upper respiratory infections, including RSV. You want to take a look at the data from the CDC. This time last year, close to 0% of roughly 700 RSV tests came back positive in Oklahoma. Now that positivity rate is much higher. It peaked in late November with more than 13% of nearly 450 tests coming back positive. Two News Oklahoma's Jeanette Quesada spoke with one mother who says all four of her children were infected. She says when her youngest contracted RSV, she was worried for her life. <laughs> yeah. Kennedy Myers is a mother of four. She's grateful her eight-month-old daughter, Indy, is happy and healthy. Four months ago, she was praying for her well-being because she had contracted RSV. Went to the emergency room that night because she, could, she couldn't breathe right. They gave her steroids. Um, within 48 hours, she was admitted to the hospital and three days later was in ICU with it. Little Indy was on eight liters of oxygen, a feeding tube, steroids, antibiotics, and several IVs. So she ended up getting pneumonia ah. secondary to RSV. An experience Myers describes as traumatic and terrifying because they had lost their eldest to a lung infection just three years ago. My oldest had it, had to be in the hospital for three weeks, put home on oxygen, was never able to fully recover until he passed away um, from a different lung infection. Dr. Jeff Gallis with Hillcrest Medical Center says this year they're seeing more people getting infected at a higher rate. Pediatric units are full of kids with RSV. We're seeing more influenza uh, admissions. We're seeing an uptick in our COVID uh, admissions. And all this puts strain on the hospitals because the emergency rooms just can't handle the volume. He says it's also causing shortages of resources like antiviral medications, antibiotics, and cough syrup. The challenge now is that, like I said, we've got people being exposed all across the communities. People are not masking. People are gathering. And so the risk is much worse this year than it's been in a number of years. He says the youngest and oldest populations are among the most vulnerable when it comes to RSV and the flu because they run a higher risk of complications. We've been really emphasizing influenza vaccines, you know, across the entire population, but especially in our younger populations and in our in our patients, you know, 65 and older. Dr. Gallis says if the symptoms are not manageable at home, that's when you should consider taking your child to the emergency room. Kids are more challenging because they can get ill pretty quickly. Adults have a lot more um, kind of lead time into this, but but I think the development of shortness of breath would be a, a good example of prolonged fevers that are not responding to, um, you know, Tylenol uh, like medications, um, nausea and vomiting, not able to hold down medications, getting dehydrated. Meyer says she always follows her motherly instinct. I mean, you always know your children. If you're sent home and you feel like they're worse, go back. <laughs> Dr. Gala says as we are in the initial wave of these different kinds of viruses, we've just started out, he says it's hard to foresee when we'll reach the peak.